It's common on forms to require users to select a checkbox confirming that they've read the terms and conditions. The technique I'm going to show you uses jQuery to disable the Submit button until the checkbox has been selected. In this page here, I've already attached the jQuery core library and created a script block with a jQuery document ready handler. So I'm going to create the code in here. The submit button has an ID of send. I'm going to need to refer to the submit button on several occasions, so I'll store a reference to it in a variable called button. Dreamweaver gives me code hints with all the IDs in the page, so select send. Now that I have that reference to the uh, submit button, I need to disable the button, so apply the ATTR method, which sets an attribute to the button variable, and I need to set disabled to the value disabled. That might seem a rather strange way of doing it, but what's happening is that this is setting the disabled boolean property of the input element to the value disabled, and that's the XHTML way of doing it. But even though you're not using XHTML, that is the way in which browsers expect it to be. The reason I'm using jQuery to disable the submit button rather than put the disabled attribute directly in the input tag is because if I put it in the HTML and somebody arrives on the website with JavaScript disabled, they can never submit the form. So what this does is if JavaScript is enabled, it will then disable the submit button until it's re-enabled. So I now need to get a reference to the checkbox. So we'll do that. And the checkbox has the ID terms. And I need to add a change event handler to that. And it's the third one down, which will insert an anonymous function for me. And inside the anonymous function, I need to create a conditional statement to find out whether the checkbox has been checked. I do that with if this period checked. This is a JavaScript keyword, and you often use it also in jQuery. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually mixing standard JavaScript with jQuery. And that's perfectly normal, because jQuery is JavaScript. It's just a convenient way of writing JavaScript. So the command that I want to perform if this has been checked, if the checkbox has been checked, is to remove that disabled attribute from the button. And I use remove attribute, or ATTR as it has in uh, jQuery. And the attribute that I want to remove is disabled. So if the checkbox has been checked, it'll remove the disabled attribute. But somebody might decide, oh, I've managed to re-enable the submit button. I wonder what happens if I deselect the checkbox. So if somebody does deselect the checkbox, you need to disable it again. So an else clause and it will be button ATTR, and again, disabled as the value, or the, the name of the attribute, and the value will be disabled. And that should be all you need to do. So let's just save that and test it. Turn on live view. You can see that the submit button is now disabled. If I check the checkbox, submit button is now active. If I deselect it, it becomes uh, disabled again. So that's quite a simple technique to disable a submit button unless a checkbox is selected. Of course, you could use this with any form element that you want to toggle on and off. It doesn't need to be the submit button. It's important to realize, though, that this technique doesn't actually stop the form from being submitted if JavaScript is turned off. The form processing script on the web server still needs to check that all required fields have been filled in or selected.